Puppet Family. Which way are you going, Billy? Ten minutes after 12 at uh, K-Day in the B. Bailey Brown radio program, charging steadfastly forward until uh, 6 o'clock this morning. You just wait a minute here. I'm trying to write something down. It's awful, and I can't write. <laughs> which is, you know, if you're trying to write something down and you can't write, it poses a definite problem, which, you know, will probably hurt your head if given enough thought. Weather for Los Angeles and vicinity, considerable cloudiness with a chance of showers tonight through Saturday. Gusty winds at times both days. Continued cool. Overnight low near 50. High today near 60. And a chance of rain about 30% tonight. 50% Friday and Friday night. And 30% upon Saturday. All right. Currently at the Civic Center, it's 53 degrees. In the Valley, 51. In Orange County, 54. And at the beach under cloudy skies, it's 53 degrees. Which, if you translate that literally into English, means they don't know what he's talking about, so don't pay any attention to him or get scared of it or run off from it. These are Moody Blues. Question. Trying to talk like Earl Trout. <laughs> Don't 
news and ask our question. 15 minutes after midnight, this is B. Bailey Brown at K-Day until 6 o'clock in the morning. Yes, and there's a K-Day suggestion. Make this coming Mother's Day special. Yes, help a needy, help a have a... I I don't know. Help a needy mother and a child overseas. Send a donation to care. Mother's Day, Los Angeles, 9 to 1962. And hold on a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. John Gardner, DD4. Sixty-two is Don Gardner, DD4. You got to be Bailey Brown thing till six o'clock this morning. And Kate, it's nineteen minutes after twelve, and I'm gonna double the hits for you. All right, these are the turtles. Is it any wonder? I wonder a lot. I don't know. You see things in me that nobody else could see, or had looked quite deep enough to find.
of the turtles. Is it any wonder? You got to be Bailey Brown radio production until 6 o'clock in the morning. Produced, written, and directed by me. Probably where the basic difficulty lies, you see. 20 minutes after 12 and it's 53 degrees. These are the major stories. The City Board of Education has instructed Superintendent of Schools Robert Kelly to negotiate a back-to-work agreement aimed at getting striking teachers back in the classrooms by Monday. The board was by no means unanimous. Conservative members tried to get the question referred to a closed session, but the liberals successfully argued that the question of the moment is simply to get the teachers back in school. Board President Arthur Gardner uh, cast the deciding vote, made it four to three in favor of trying for an agreement involving only the, re the return of the teachers, not substantive issues in the strike. The board will meet in closed session tomorrow to work out the ground rules for Kelly's approach to the teachers. It remains to be seen whether the school board's decision to attempt a back-to-work agreement with striking teachers will affect pending court action against them. In the latest move, the board has gone to court only once. This time, or rather, this time to seek a contempt citation because of the teacher's defiance of a temporary restraining order against the walkout. Superior Judge Richard Chower issued the temporary restraining order Monday, first day of the walkout. He then disqualified himself from further proceedings in the case after the teachers filed a motion of prejudice against him. The case was transferred to Judge John Cole. Cole has set a hearing on the case for April 27th, 11 days away. Meantime, the latest count shows absenteeism jumped to 43% on the fourth day of the strike. A former Lockheed aircraft employee has been found guilty of first-degree murder in the shooting of a plant supervisor and a union officer, and of second-degree murder in the shooting of a second union officer who tried to stop him. Isaac Jernigan was convicted by a jury in a courtroom of Superior Judge Norman Dowds. He had entered a double plea, innocent and innocent by reason of insanity, to the shootings in Lockheed in Burbank, rather at Lockheed in Burbank, and at a nearby union headquarters last summer. The jury now enters a second phase of the trial to determine whether Jernigan should be considered sane at the time of the shootings. And if it does consider he was sane, it must decide on the penalty in the first-degree murder convictions. Charles Manson. The hippie guru accused of masterminding seven slayings last August was arraigned on a new murder charge today. He and 21-year-old disciple Susan Denise Atkins appeared before Superior Judge George Dell following their indictment Tuesday with a third Manson family member for the killing of musician Gary Heinemann. Judge Dell postponed the case until next Wednesday. He told the 35-year-old Manson to mull over his request that he be allowed to defend himself. A rock and bottle throwing crowd bombarded real estate offices in a Bank of America branch office tonight in what seems to be a repeat of the violence that seared the campus community of Isla Vista last January. Sheriff's deputy, deputies said a crowd began gathering at 7.30 last night in the largely student community adjacent to the University of California at Santa Barbara, growing to more than 500 by late evening. Windows were broken in real estate offices and at the temporary Bank of America branch that was burned down during the riots last January. Numerous trash fires were set for the third straight night. The South Vietnamese say their troops have killed 21 of the enemy in fighting 70 miles west of Saigon. Seven government, seven government soldiers were reported wounded. A government spokesman insisted the fighting took place inside South Vietnam. The area is about 55 miles southwest of a Cambodian village, around which government troops reportedly teamed up with Cambodian forces yesterday to smash a North Vietnamese base. Elsewhere, one American soldier was reported killed and 20 wounded when a grenade was thrown among them as they watched a movie at a camp. South Vietnamese was offered, rather South Vietnam was, has offered to ret Foreign Minister Tran Van Lam announced Friday that he was making an offer saying it was being made because of what he termed a situation of panic among the Vietnamese in Cambodia. Lam's announcement came after reports of mass killings of Vietnam Vietnamese in Cambodia. The Foreign Minister said he might involve, his offer might involve as many as 50,000 Vietnamese and nearly 1,500 Vietnamese already have crossed the border from Cambodia back to South Vietnam. The Nixon administration has reported approaching Cambodia's request for military assistance with extreme caution. The State Department announced Thursday that Cambodia's new government has asked for arms and other war material. Some officer officials say that the best solution might be the international arrangement to furnish aid pegged to the purpose of supporting Cambodian neutrality. Meanwhile, Washington still has not responded officially to a statement Thursday by Soviet Deputy Foreign Minister Jacob Malik. Malik said only that a new Geneva conference can resolve the situation in Indochina. He added that the Soviets are paying the closest attention to the possibility of reconvening such a conference. 
Astronauts Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigert are reported resting in their Apollo 13 spacecraft as it nears the end of its perilous journey. Splashdown is now set for 1.07 p.m. That's Eastern Standard Time today, about 610 miles southeast of American Samoa in the Pacific. The spacecraft is on a near-perfect course. The astronauts plan to fire their control jets for a small course correction at 7.35, 7.53 a.m. this morning. Good weather conditions are forecast for the splashdown area. And if you hear air raid sirens today, it will mean good news that if the antagonizingly long voyage of Apollo 13 is ended with a safe splashdown in the Pacific, county supervisors earlier had proclaimed the period until splashdown as a time for prayer, later receiving permission from national civil defense officials to sound the sirens for 30 seconds. Supervisor Kenneth Kahn says that he has suggested in a telegram to President Nixon that all civil defense sirens in the nation be sounded when the crippled spacecraft returns to Earth. It's 26 minutes after midnight. That's K Day News. minutes after 12, and I am B. Bailey Brown with double the hits from KDAY Santa Monica. It's the fun one minute in the year 2525. If man is still alive, if woman can survive, they may fall. Tell the truth, tell no lies Everything you think, do and say Is in the bill you took today In the year 45, 45 Ain't gonna need your teeth, won't need your eyes You won't find a thing to choose Nobody's gonna look at you Thank you. 
1969 in the year 2525. That's wonderful. 28 minutes away from 1 o'clock. This is B. Bailey Brown doubling the hits at K-Day. K-Day 1580. Isn't that the most revolting thing that you've ever heard, man? I'm sitting here trying to wake up this morning, which is a lot of fun. Did you ever try to wake up? Come here, come see. Lord of my 
That's Neil Diamond and Suleiman. This is the B. Bailey Brown Radio Program at K-Day. Fun 1580, sitting on top of Raspberry Mountain in sunny Southern California. <laughs> Except at this time of the morning, because there aren't no sun, as anybody can plainly tell by looking out the window. So it's what is known as trivial. Trivial. That's good. Uh, K-Day reminds you that on April 25th, uh, three great jazz ensembles, Gerald Wilson, Willie Bobo, and Bobby Hutchinson. Hut Hutchers. <clears throat> Hi, Bobby. That's twice, two days in a row now that I've blown your name. That cat's going to hit me over the head with whatever instrument he plays there. Anyhow, they appear at the Pasadena Civic Auditorium in an evening of togetherness and jazz, sponsored by parents in support of concerned students of Pasadena. Tickets will be available at all mutual agencies. Let me play you my record right now. Because this knocks me out. It's 1580 KDA Boy. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. This is Lulu. It's called Hum a Little Song from Your Heart. <laughs> you got it. Take it anyhow. Good for you. People get around and hear this brand new sound. I know you're gonna dig it cause you're hip and you're going with me. Yeah. Well, I know I'm gonna cry cause this feeling deep inside. And you can't explain the way that you feel to another human being. Yeah. So come on and hum. Destroys me. That's Lulu. I'm a song from your heart. This is B. Bailey doing his thing until six o'clock in the morning at K Day. <laughs> Don't forget that K Day rolls the greatest rock of the past two decades. It happens, well, it starts this afternoon at three o'clock with Tom Mall. It's called a K Day Great Weekend. Isn't that utterly fantastic? I hope so. Let me double the hits for you. Kind of an old hit. I'm not too old. 1968, 67, Smokey Robinson. He's at a Miracles and it's called More Love. More Love. More Love. Any way you say it, it sounds good, you know. Let it be smooth, don't hesitate, make it now. Open your heart and let my love 